Hola, my beautiful humans. This is Jasmine Castillo, and I bring stories and cases from the people of color community, bringing awareness of murdered and missing indigenous women, girls, two spirits, the LGBTQ community, Asian American, Native Hawaiian, Pacific Islander, Black Indigenous people of color. These are their stories. So, welcome to Hands Off, my podcast. This coming Monday will mark nine years since Hagos Sege Malak met two people at a St. Paul, Minnesota restaurant. A grainy surveillance image of someone using his ATM may show the last person to see him alive. This is Hago's story. I love to learn information in the background of each person in each episode that I do. And Hago's was originally from Edra, which was also considered official state of Edra, the country in the Horn of Africa region of Eastern Africa, with its capital and the largest city at Asmara. It is bordered by Ethiopia in the south, Sudan in the west, and Djibouti in the southeast. The oldest human remains were found in this area that dated back to one million years old. An anthropologist indicated that this may be the area that contains significant records relating to evolution. The country of Edra is a multi-ethnic country with nine recognized ethnic groups. Most residents speak languages from the Afrosiatic family, either of the Ethiopian Semitic languages or the Cushitic branches. And after World War II, Edra became part of Ethiopia. And in 1991, they gained their independence from Ethiopia after a 30-year-long battle fought between Edran People's Liberation Front and the Ethiopian Army. They officially celebrated their 28th anniversary this year, the independence on May 24th. Here are a few famous people who came from Edra. Tiffany Haddish, an American stand-up comedian and actress, her father was an Idran descent. She was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time magazine in 2018. Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus. He was elected as a director general for a five-year term in May of 2017. He is the first person from the Hu African region to head the world's leading public health agency. Joe Negus, the son of an Etran immigrant, he made history when he became the first American of Etran origin to win a seat in the Congress. Nat Bierhe, who was an NFL player born to an Etran father and a black American mother, and in 2014 he became the first Etran American to be drafted into the NFL when the New York Giants selected him as their fifth round, 152nd pick. Hagos was born on August 8, 1987, in Adi Kahad, Idra, yet relocated to St. Paul, Minnesota with his father and his younger sister when he was six years old. A graduate of South St. Paul Senior High School, which is one of the popular public schools located in St. Paul. He was studying computer engineering at a nearby Inver Hills Community College, and ironically, one of their notable alumni was Pau Hua Her, a visual artist in Minnesota who works within multiple genres of photography. Hagos enjoyed listening to music from Bob Marley to Andre 3000. His sister, Wayne, fondly recalls that was a hard-working family man and described him as a sweet, fun-loving computer geek. One of the things he loved was going out to dinner with his family. 
and his favorite place were buffet restaurants. That would be the last place he would be seen. As you're aware, my podcast is never pumped with commercials identifying Randall things. But I know this message is extremely important. My mid-roll will be talking about current missing persons in Minnesota. Lorenzo Moreno Pachero. He is currently endangered. His date of birth is January 1st, 1951 and went missing on April 15th, 2012 from Burnsville, Minnesota. He is identified as Hispanic with a light complexion, standing at 5 feet 6 inches, weighing about 150 pounds, black, short hair, brown eyes. He was last seen around Burnsville Parkway, near the city's border with Savage. Some of the circumstances of his disappearance, Lorenzo does not speak English and suffers from a serious medical condition. He was diagnosed with dementia as a result of a head injury. He was last seen wearing black pants and a red shirt and walks with a limp. If you have any information on Lorenzo, please contact the police agency Dakota County Communications Center at 651-322-2323. Another endangered missing person, Cherise Lorraine Pollard, date of birth December 19, 1972, went missing on April 17, 1992, from Minneapolis, Minnesota. She is described as a black female with a medium complexion, standing at 5 feet 7 inches, weighing 120 pounds, medium black hair, brown eyes. She was last seen at her residence in the vicinity of the 600 block of East 16th Street in Minneapolis, Minnesota. At the time of her disappearance, she was pregnant at the time. Some identify marks or characteristics. Her hair is black but has blonde streaks and curly. She has a birthmark on her knee, pierced ears, and previously fractured a wrist. You can submit a tip directly on blackandmissinginc.com or contact Minneapolis Police Department at 612-673-2345. All their information can be found on Black and Missing Foundation Inc. www.blackandmissinginc.com. I will have their information in the show notes. If you see something, say something. On August 15, 2013, 26 year old Hagos Tsuke Malak was robbed in St. Paul, Minnesota. Although this is not the exact location, But sources state that Hagos had been robbed on Central Avenue West in St. Paul, Minnesota. The robbers stole $3,800 from him, according to a search warrant document. Hagos ends up with the cell phone of one of the robbers and uses the phone to attempt to contact his assailants to get his money back. But when he was unsuccessful, Hagos made an appointment to see a St. Paul police officer. Later on, Joseph Graves, 22, and Wayne Brown, 23 at the time, were arrested and charged with the robbery and attacking Hagos. On August 28th, Hagos took a bus, leaving his home downtown around 9 p.m. towards the Hunan Garden restaurant, intersected between Cedar Street North and 6th Street East, which was downtown St. Paul, Minnesota, arriving to the restaurant around 10 p.m. As Hunan Garden began to close their doors at 1.45 a.m. the following day, Hagos decided to catch a ride with two men, according to a witness. The witness contacted investigators mentioning that Hagos left with two individuals in a car, a man with a shaved head and another individual whose gender is not known but had tattoos on one arm. Almost three hours later, at 4.30 a.m., an unidentified woman was seen on surveillance footage using Hagel's credit card at an ATM in Minneapolis. I can see clearly in the photos that she's holding the debit card with her shirt, trying to avoid to get fingerprints on it. Police were later called at around 6.40 a.m. that same morning, August 29th, to a parking lot on the 5700 block of Hamline Avenue North in Shoreview, Minnesota, 
with reports that witnesses had seen someone slumped over on the ground near a building on that block. When police arrived, they found Hagos, who had been shot and killed. He did not have any forms of identification on him, which we could come to some agreement that it was taken off of him either during or after his encounter with a person of interest. Later on, on September 25, 2013, around 11.30 a.m., there was a press conference that was held. You can see his sister, Wayne, in a video clip leading the charge to get answers for her brother who, just days earlier, had written her a letter telling how proud he was of her. Quote, I am really proud of you. You accomplished what I wanted to do in a matter of a short time. I hope your first year goes well. I know you will make our family proud. Keep strong and stay smart. Don't make poor decisions. And if you need advice, I am here. Love, Hago. End quote. In the Star Tribune, his sister was quoted, He was my other half, my best friend, and someone took my brother's life and discarded him like garbage. End quote. Hago's father is seen wiping his eyes with such grief and loss. This tore my heart apart. To see the moment when a family has come with terms, that a lost loved one is gone, and they are left picking up the pieces fighting for justice, fighting to keep their family standing with such a tragedy. It has been almost 10 years since Hagos Malak was found murdered five hours after meeting two people at a St. Paul, Minnesota restaurant. The Ramsey County Sheriff's Office has not said whether the robbery and Malak's death are related and are still investigating the case. Yet they have ruled out that there isn't a connection to Hago's death to any of the recent Somali gang homicides that occurred around the time of him being found. The Hago's family doesn't have any involvement nor affiliations with the gangs surrounding that area. Hago's case remains unsolved, with authorities asking for any information related to the individuals in the surveillance images or details around events that night. I will have the links of the photos and videos in the show notes. There is currently a reward of $1,000 for any information identifying the unknown individuals that leads to an arrest. Remember when I identified that Hagos had made an appointment to meet with a police officer regarding the previous robbery? That appointment was on the day he was killed. The two people Hagos left with are identified as a black American male with a shaved head, and the other one was a light-skinned person with an uncertain gender or race with short dark hair and an orange or red t-shirt. The second person also had several arm tattoos. The third person of interest is a black American woman who used Hagel's bank card at 4.30 that morning at Minneapolis U.S. Bank on West Broadway Avenue near DuPont Avenue. She struggled with the transaction for several seconds before successfully getting some money. She is not a suspect in his death, but is possibly a witness. If you have any information about her identity, please contact the Criminal Investigation Unit at 651-266-7320. And if you prefer to remain anonymous, you can submit a tip through Crime Stoppers, case number 13-30971. I will have all the information in the show notes. If you'd like to stay on a little bit longer after the outro music, I do have an additional commercial for you in regards to my other podcast. Thank you for listening to Hands Off My Podcast. If you are enjoying the podcast and you'd like to support the mission, I do have a Patreon membership that will help the cause and bring more detail on cases and stories from the people of color community. If you yourself has a lost loved one or a story suggestion, 
please don't hesitate to contact me at email. Hands off my podcast at gmail.com. And if you are only able to support in another way, please give this podcast a five star rating on Apple or Spotify and continue to listen to upcoming episodes every Thursday, wherever you listen to your podcast. Dios te bendiga. A clip of my next upcoming guest on Noise Palu Zion podcast and can be listened to any of the podcast platforms every Friday. You can't replace a child. It's, that's impossible. And when uh, then I tried the bank accounts, checked on the bank accounts, all the money is gone. I had literally $5.85 in my pocket. That was it. And that's all I had. So I said, well, number one problem, we've got to get the child home. So started calling around, called the school. Another family had picked her up, called that family. They weren't home. So I have to do something, not knowing where the child is. I started driving around looking for a police officer, thinking, well, maybe uh, the cops would be able to help me track down my child. Guy says, no, I can't really help you. Has the child been gone for more than 48 hours? No. Who do you think the child is with? Well, I think she's with the mother. Well, then she's not in immediate danger so far as you can tell. I go, well, that's true. So I said she had been taken to another family's house. I'm calling them the Johnsons. Can you call them? Cop calls the Johnson family. And over the cop radio, they said, where is the child? And over the police radio, I heard California. I'm living in Pennsylvania. This podcast promotes small businesses, entrepreneurs, musicians, and artists. Stay tuned.